we've got a Nobel Prize winning researcher with us. That's pretty exciting because she's very local. Also, frightfully good food. And then finally, lights, camera, review. So on September 14th, 2015, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University astrophysics faculty and students at the Prescott campus in Arizona joined colleagues around the world in listening to the very first notes of what they hoped would one day be a symphony of sound coming from the universe. On that day, the laser interferometer and I know I was going to slaughter this word, Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, or LIGO, recorded the first evidence of gravita gravitational waves. Those are ripples in space-time first predicted by Albert Einstein a century ago. The chirp detected was a signature sound of two massive black holes merging together, 1.3 billion light years from Earth. That, it, I know it's not comprehensible whatsoever. So. Jasmine Gill, wonderful to have you on. Thank you. You are a, a space physics student at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical yes. University in Prescott. Mm -hmm. And you are a new friend of mine because I actually know your folks, <laughs> which I didn't realize when I scheduled you on this show. But um, obviously, you're a very accomplished young lady doing some amazing things that not everyone gets to do. But LIGO, so just won the Nobel Prize. Now, it was applied for in 2015. You were saying that it last year it didn't get, um, it, we were too late. So by the, the time we published the paper, which was in February, we announced uh, the detection, actually the nomination period for last year's Nobel Prize was actually closed. Uh, and so when the, you know, last year's Nobel Prize came out, we were all pretty disappointed that, you know, LIGO didn't get it. But then there's always next year and we ended up getting it this year. So that was a huge thing for us. It is hu it's huge for anyone. I mean, at the Nobel Prize, I, I tell you, we hear about this all the time, but um, so tell us about LIGO and then the role that you and Embry Riddle played in, in this discovery. Sure. So LIGO is um, the first instrument that has been able to detect and hear the universe. So from early astronomy age, you know, you had Galileo who pointed his telescope to the skies and we saw, you know, the skies and the stars for the first time. And now for the first time, we can actually hear this universe. So this opens up a completely new window for not only astronomers, but for the world. And we like to coin this term as multi-messenger astronomy. And so think of it as for the first time, you know, um, you have, uh, not only the ability to see, but the ability to hear. And so we've heard these black holes colliding. And so that was the first detection. And just recently, a month ago, we, you know, we uh, announced that we had two binary neutron stars colliding. So that was a completely new cataclysmic event that never occurred before, that was never observed before. And so with this era opening, we as LIGO scientists, and just as people ourselves, we don't really know what this holds for the future and what changes will occur because of this, but you know, one it's, day at a time. It's groundbreaking, mm -hmm. space breaking, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Well, Jasmine, you know, we've got to give you some credit here because we've heard that you are the youngest out of of 1,000 plus authors in the original LIGO paper mm -hmm. um, that backs up this discovery. It's kind of unusual to have someone, were you 20? I was 19. You were 19. I started in LIGO when I was 18, and then we had the discovery when I was 19. And so I was helping and leading the data analysis and astrophysics part, and that's kind of my passion. And so, of course, you know, we had the detections, the three detections from binary black holes, and then we announced our neutron star detection. But what we love and breathe at Prescott is to detect gravitational waves from supernovae, so massive dying stars that result in spectacular explosions that will give us many insights to not only how the universe first formed, but how these stars explode. So. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. How did you get into this? I mean, you were literally like, a, well, so, what we call a rocket scientist, <laughs> I guess, in some sense. I was uh, in the second year, I was in the in second grade, and uh, my parents actually gave me a book on astronomy and physics, and I started flipping through it, and from there, I knew I wanted to be an astronaut. And so, you know, every single step I've taken since that day is to, you know, to be on this path to being an astronaut. And so yeah. when I was applying for colleges, you know, it was between Embry-Riddle and MIT, and Embry-Riddle gave me the sweet option because I was endorsed by Norman Knight, NASA, who is an alum of Embry-Riddle Prescott. And so since then, three years ago, I've had, you know, unlimited opportunities to conduct research, go full, full steam ahead with classes, you know, participate in extracurriculars and really shape myself to the person I wanted to be. And so that's what's kind of resulted in, a, in the culmination of my passion today is that, you know, with this Nobel Prize, with me being a full-on research scientist, um, I'm really headed on toward the path. 
path I've been seeing since I was a kid. So Unbelievable. Well, I, it's one thing to imagine you want to do something and another thing to have the gray matter or the ability and the drive in it mm -hmm. to be able to accomplish it. Mm -hmm. You're, you know, uh, you're very brilliant in math, uh, you know, which is um, not, a, I couldn't, sorry, I couldn't do it. There's <laughs> many things I can do, Jasmine. This is not something I could do. But anyway, it is an amazing thing. Now, do you still want to be an astronaut? Yes, definitely. So You're actually, kidding. this past summer, I was over at MIT and at uh, the Oak Ridge Laboratories in Tennessee, Knoxville, working on supernova simulations, introducing MIT to what the Embry-Riddle folk at Prescott are doing for supernovae, you know, kind of colluding between data analysis methods and experimentalist techniques. But in the middle of that, I actually had the opportunity to make a, a trip down to Johnson Space Center uh, down at Houston. Um, and meet with Norman Knight personally, face to face. And so I got to meet astronauts. I was sitting in mission control for a couple of hours. So I got to talk with the, ISS, the folk up at the ISS. And so everything's aligning pretty nicely. And so I am, I am graduating uh, this May 2018, and I'm going forward to graduate school, finishing that up, getting that PhD, and then hopefully applying by the time I'm 25. Wow. And you like centrifuges or whatever they do, and they spin you around and do all those crazy things. Of course. <laughs> all the wild <laughs> Takes that things. many brains to be an astronaut, does it? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you definitely are gifted in that area. Thank you. Jasmine Gill, an amazing uh, young person involved in winning a Nobel Prize with Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University right here in Prescott. Congratulations again Thank on you. that tremendous. And we will keep an eye on the trajectory of your career, Jasmine. Thanks. Wow, phenomenal. Whew. Okay, don't go away. When we come 